Today, we're at number three of the top 10 episodes of the Couple Money Podcast. One of the most effective ways to dump your debt is by harnessing the power of community. Having a support network is critical as you're bound to have some setbacks on your journey to becoming debt-free. I had a lot of fun talking to Tony, author of The Great Debt Dump, in this episode. She had some wonderful advice and free tools that you can use to find your tribe and keep you focused. Don't forget to check out her book or visit her at Debt Free Divas if you want to find out more. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Couple Money Podcast. If you're looking to become financially free together, this is your show. Here's your host, El Martinez. Welcome to the show. The topic today is about getting rid of your debt. Instead of talking about debt snowballs and avalanches, apps or sites, we're going to look at communities, specifically the support network you may or may not have and how it can affect your success. Tony Husbands is joining us today. She'll be releasing a book about dumping debt through the power of community. Besides knowing the stats and studies about getting out of debt, Tony has the personal experience. If her voice sounds familiar, it's because Tony was on the podcast before in episode six when she shared her family's story of dumping six figures of debt. She's also been busy on Debt Free Divas helping others to better position themselves to build up their wealth. In this episode, Tony gets into how tapping into the community can help you pay off debt faster. And for those who don't already have one to support them, she has tips and free tools you can use to start a community. I hope you enjoyed this interview. I'm very excited about the topic that you are talking about, which is dumping debt, not just what we usually hear, people focus on the numbers and everything, but you're talking about dumping debt using the community around you. First of all, how did you come up with that idea? Okay, so the idea has been floating around for about the last year, and it came as a result of my attempt to work up to running my very first 5K. So let me just say, running is not my strength. <laughs> It's not my strength, but after having two babies and really trying two babies, a number of surgeries and just really needing to and wanting to get back in shape, I started uh, talking with a couple of girlfriends and we started with a walking group. So we started actually about a year ago walking. And then one of them mentioned that, you know, she would want to actually run a half marathon. I thought, hmm, I've never done that before. Why not? Let's do it. So... <laughs> So I love challenges and, I, you know, and I love challenging myself. So we actually started with the goal of working on a 5K, working up to running a 5K, running one, and then we were going to move up to the 10K and then the half marathon. So last year we were, as we we're running, one of the things I do when I run is I talk, right? It helps me pass the time because again, running is not my strength. So I'm talking to my running partner and I mentioned that there's no way in the world I can see myself actually meeting somebody, especially in the evening when I'm tired, um, not missing any time, getting out and actually looking forward to running. And I know it was because I had somebody there waiting on me because I've, you know, tried to do the run thing before I have some successes and I, you know, I have other ways that I like to work out, but running is just not one of them. But I will say that we, did not miss any dates together, any, any dates together running other than scheduled, you know, uh, vacation time, yeah. things like that. And I know that was peer pressure. I know it was, especially I'm, I'm more of a morning person. So she, you know, she works nine to five. So we would have to be in the evening. And by the time the evening rolls around, I'm ready, usually ready for some TV and, <laughs> and chocolates. Or <whatever>. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I, it just, you know, it became this discussion and we're like, wow, we're doing this. We're actually, we were really kind of complaining about the first 60 second run walk interval. And then to get to the point where we're running 20 minutes and we're actually doing this and then thinking, oh, wow, the 5k is coming up and we actually did it. So that whole experience led me to, to think about, you know, running is not something that I like, but it's very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Being in shape is important. Um, focusing on uh, better health is important. So getting out of the same thing, I think, applies to getting out of debt. It is not something that people necessarily look forward to or think about. That's something that you want to do. But the result, the end result is what is very beneficial. It's, it's something that is going to make a difference for our family, for our future and and generations to come. And I thought, wow, what if you had the same type of peer pressure? <laughs> Yeah. You know, positive peer pressure, I would say. Somebody is uh, has some expectations of you. You know, there's some accountability that is holding you to to continue to focus on that. Um, my husband and I, we were that community, us together, but we were that we we were that community kind of holding each other accountable, being there to pick the other person up when when somebody's discouraged or maybe trying to stray off track. And so those are some of the things that I found that was very helpful with my running group, my first running group experience, if I wanted to to see if this is something that could be applied to to dumping debt. So I ran a little experiment last year with a group of people, and then the result basically is this uh, process that I have come up with, seven-week process, that takes us through the steps of building your accountability team and using the tools, the free tools that we have available, such as Skype or um, Google Hangouts or old school telephone, you know, (laughs) you don't have to, (laughs) you can just get on a conference call or if it it works for you, even just meeting face to face, you know, because sometimes, you know, that works if it's, if it's a family, if it's a a group of neighbors, if it's a group of coworkers who see each other already on a regular basis and you can just, um, you know, dedicate one of your lunches a week or something like that, where you can get together and discuss what you guys are working on individually and um, share your goals. Because there's actually research around this topic, which is really interesting and really exciting. I'm at a Dominican university. One of the professors there found that if you write down your goals, share them with a friend and review them weekly, you're 33% more likely to accomplish those goals. So who couldn't use a boost in 33% more productivity yeah. around getting out of debt? And so that's why I think the, the concept of using the power of community is something that we should definitely try, especially if you've been trying this on your own and you, you get started and you have all of that momentum at the beginning and then you, you know, something happens, life happens and then we get off track and then we don't get back around to it. And then before we know it, it's five years later. And I've got, you know, not only am I not out of debt, but I have more and and then you get discouraged and you just give up. So that's why I think it's so important to surround yourself with people who are, who are um, either on that journey with you, or at least can support you in that and see that there's a need for you to accomplish that goal and keep you encouraged. So that's kind of the the backstory, if you will, for how the idea for um, dumping debt and community came up. I like that you have a seven week course. I think anyone can at least commit to seven weeks. Do you <laughs> mind maybe like just giving an overview of that process that you came up with? Oh, not at all. So initially you need to find your team. Sometimes it happens naturally i.e. you're married and your spouse is, you know, just there with you, <laughs> even though sometimes even <laughs> spouse can kind of come along kicking and screaming sometimes or just not be interested for a period of time. But sometimes you have kind of a built in or maybe you have a roommate or a group of really close friends that you, you connect with and you're like minded. Sometimes that happens in, uh, naturally. But I think a lot of times, especially as we grow older and we get busy in our lives and and dealing with our, you know, our own personal issues and families and and businesses if you run a business or whatever you just it's maybe you don't have the time or you don't take the time I should say to intentionally connect with people around an issue that's going to be productive for your future so the first the first step is going to be intentionally building your team so I've had a couple of um, a, a bit of experience with this in a couple of different areas recently and so so from that I talk about you know basically just kind of looking within your you know network or your sphere of influence you know, starting with 
family, starting with friends, starting with, you know, coworkers, or if you're in a civic group or your church or some kind of volunteer, you know, you think about all of these people that you connect with on a regular basis that you may not necessarily consider who are dealing with some of the same issues that you're dealing with. So one of the ways that I was suggesting that people do this, it, it, because number one, everybody is not ready at this, at the time you yeah. are. You know, so that's the thing you just, you know, you want to find people that are interested, willing, ready and able. You know, some people might tell you, you know what, I will let you know. And that's OK. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually, actually thank that person because you'd rather deal with people who are are at a point where they're really wanting to make some changes versus some people are like, yeah, maybe so. And then they drop off because that can be kind of um deflating too where you have this group and then people start dropping off and and then maybe the momentum sputters a little bit so you Mm -hmm. really want to be intentional about being selective and and this is a little bit different for me personally because I'm more of a like kumbaya let's all get together whatever right (laughs) but in this case you want to be a little bit more selective about the people that you that you approach and I would say for the for the purposes of this this project, we we should limit it to no more than ten. And the reason that we should limit it to no more than ten is because of some of the tools that I suggest using, and some of those limitations are ten. But I think ten is actually a pretty big group anyway. Mm-hmm. But that's just a, a good round number to to make your maximum. But I would start at maybe two or three people that you know. Okay. You know, two. You know, it doesn't. You're, we're looking for quality, not quantity. You know, so you can have just an, just as an effective group of two as you can of six or seven. So so but start with maybe two or three people and and chat with them and and bring up the fact that maybe you've heard about this idea of, you know, dumping debt with the community and see if it, you know, does it resonate or do people kind of gloss over and like, you know what, my, my phone, let me answer this phone. I'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can kind of gauge, gauge their interest or, you know, are you a part of some of our online communities? You know, like with, the, you know, our Facebook pages, we have people that are um, discussing, you know, some of the pros and cons to, you know, maybe you, maybe your group is virtual and that's mm-hmm. totally okay too, you know, but I would say connect with maybe two or three people. And then maybe those two or three people know two or three people and you can kind of radiate out, Do not be concerned so much with the, with the size of the group, just making sure that you limit it to 10 for the purposes of this, because like I said, of, of the tools that I recommend, once you have your group in place, um, you want to figure out how you guys are going to connect. So are you going to, and I think I mentioned some of these before, but I'll just run over them again. Are you going to do face-to-face? Now, mm-hmm. face-to-face is great because it's it's um, it's good, number one, just to connect with people personally and just develop that relationship. But it also, I think, again, you that peer pressure is a little bit more <laughs> prevalent. And we usually, you know, want to shy away from that. But in this case, I think that, that that positive peer pressure, you know, leads to um, the accountability and the support and encouragement that's going to um, be inherent once you guys kind of get onto the same page. Now, the only the drawback for me for face to face would be um, number one. I mean, personally, I would have to find childcare, or you know, travel would be a consideration. You know, timing might be an issue. Also. <laughs> Not that this is a bad thing, but who's going to bring snacks? You know, that's always a, <laughs> that's always a consideration when you, when when people get together for for meet and greets, right? So so those are some those you know could be some of the 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 uh, drawbacks could be you know depending on your personality, um, in terms of meeting face to face, and that's okay because there are other options now because we live in this great age of streaming um, online access. There are some tools free tools, which are fantabulous, that are available to you if you want to, again, limit your group size. And so one I mentioned was Skype, and you can go and get a free download for Skype at Skype.com, or you can use another tool, which is a little newer, called uh, Google Hangouts. And so Google Hangouts is available, and I believe the website is, I think it's just, yeah, hangouts.google.com. And now, both of these do have a wee bit of a learning curve. So, it, you know, it may, you know, they're free, but it takes a little bit of time to get used to them. But it's, you know, if you've used any type of, you know, FaceTime or, or you know, Tango or anything like that, then, then it's, this is something that you can definitely 
have, um, you know, you get up to speed with and get your group up to speed with. Now, I like, I love these tools because number one, you you eliminate the travel, yes, <laughs> the travel time, the need for any type of, you know, familiar familial uh, arrangements that need to, to be made. You There's more flexibility. You can set the times early, early in the morning. Um, and, and some people might be a little shy about being on video. Mm-hmm. And so even I've got you covered even there because you can just turn off the camera. So then then you don't have, you know, that's that's not something that um, you have to worry about. And here's one other thing. I know I'm not sure about Skype, but I definitely know with Google Hangouts, if one person doesn't have a computer. Now, here, again, is a drawback. You need to have, of course, high high speed Internet access in a computer or a, a smartphone or some kind of um, device with a camera. Um, if you don't have that, I know Google Access, sorry, Google Hangouts allows you to call in. So they offer that as well for the Hangout meeting. So see, I, you know, I've got you covered. So, and I, like I said, there's, it's, it's very flexible. You can schedule the time around something that works for everybody in your group. And that's another reason why you really want to keep your group small, because trying to coordinate time amongst the smaller group of people is a lot easier than a larger group. Let's see. So then th- those are two video conferencing um, options you can use um, if you want to just, you know, take it old school with a telephone teleconference. You can use a tool called freeconferencecall.com. And that's a very simple setup. And everybody gets a pin, dials into a conference line at the designated time, and you guys can meet away. So those are some tools. So those are some options that you can use to um, coordinate your group meetings. Now, once you figure that out, and those are going to be two kind of very key things, getting your group together and figuring out how you're going to, how and when you're going to meet. Once you kind of figure those things out, especially if you can do it with two or three people, then you might want to think about adding to the group if it makes sense for you. Coordinating those things first, getting things in set makes it a little bit easier to kind of add people into the mix. Now, so once you have those things underway, then you want to then it's time to start looking at the actual nuts and bolts of setting goals. I think the first thing you have to kind of, again, begin with the end in mind. And as a group, it's really um, useful if somebody Mm -hmm. knows what you say you say you want to do. So they can hold you accountable. Didn't you say you wanted to have (laughs) accomplished uh, X, Y, Z by this day, then why are you engaging in this activity? Isn't that going to be counterproductive or isn't that going to set you back? Now, here's the thing, though. If you say you want to do this within the community, you really need to be open to giving people access to speak into your life. Sometimes it can be very difficult because we're grown <laughs> and we probably take, you know, we've been grown for a while. And so it can be difficult to be challenged um, in some areas that we are not being as productive in. And that's another thing with this is it, it, you really also want to invite people who are, number one, open enough, but also have the discretion to respect some of the dis- some of the things that you guys are going to be discussing. But you want people who are not just like, yes, yes, men and yes, women, somebody who's going to be um, comfortable enough, challenge you respectfully, but challenging you when you are not holding to the things that you set for yourself the first week you're going to and i suggest that you guys um, use some other tools to connect with each other and remain connected with with each other throughout the week some things that you can do would be facebook facebook has private groups secret groups that you can set up that way if you're having a moment or uh, maybe you need some some feedback and it's not your actual group schedule time you can you can pop into your secret group and get some feedback right then some other things i think skype does this as well i'm not as familiar with the skype chat but you know skype has that tool as well and then um the other thing that you can use are some of the repositories the free repositories like google google drive or microsoft OneDrive. those are two uh cloud-based repositories where you can do things like keep a group goals document so that everybody can pitch in and say these are the things that i'm working on this week so remember remember our research you're going to write your goals down once a week share them with a friend and review them so you want to keep that somewhere where everybody has access to pretty pretty simply um, so, you know, once you have your goals in place, some of the things that you, you're going to be working on for the next three, six to 12 months, and we're going to keep it short term goal focus like that so that you can really um, capitalize on the, the momentum and yeah. the time frame and the, and the success. You know, sometimes when we think about, OK, I want to have my house paid off in 15 years. 
that's a great goal. But um, for the for the purposes of of this activity, we are trying to um, help you build habits. You know, mm-hmm. so that if you can build habits in the near term, then then when it comes to looking at, OK, I want to pay my house off in the next 10 to 15 years, then you, you're building habits, you're building your budgeting muscle, you're, you're building um, discipline so that you can take off and stay on course to accomplish those goals like that. OK, so some of your short term goals may be I want to get rid of all of my credit card debt. You know, I want to develop an emergency savings. Now, once you have your goals in place, then we start. Need, we need to look at the mechanics of getting out of debt. So that's where your budgeting comes in. And so, over the next few weeks, you wanna you'd work on um, setting up a budget and sticking to a budget, tracking so that you're making sure that you are creating a budget with realistic numbers. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've actually developed your budget and you see that your income. And all of my cutbacks, I've I've cut back as much as I can, but my income just really won't cut it for making any real progress getting out of debt. So you need to look at supplementary income with some additional um, streams of income, like a second job or maybe some services that you can offer. Those are some of the things I think that come up really well in, in, in community. There is nothing like the synergy that happens when you get a group of people that are like minded together, brainstorming and coming up with ideas or at least sharing some of the experiences that they've had in the area. No, 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 no. Don't try this. Try this. You know, yeah. So so those are some of the things that um, I know are going to be very beneficial to people that want to kind of take this journey. The 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 other mechanics are actually what process do you want to look at? Do you want to use to pay off debt? And they're kind of two kind of major philosophies and they they work well for different people, you know, Mm -hmm. whether you want to use this debt avalanche where you look at your interest rate from highest to lowest. Do you want to use the debt snowball where you look at the total balance and and focus on the smallest debt first? You know, do you want to use some kind of hybrid? Um, What are you using your, what are you using your windfall uh, lump sum cash sources of income that come in? What are you using that for? Are we going on a shopping spree or are we sticking to some of the goals that we outlined in that in those first few weeks? So and then and then once you kind of out, you know, get the mechanics in and, and and start making some progress paying off debt, then we need to look at um, some of the then you need to look at some of the um, distractions mm-hmm. that that can can come up and and stop you from staying focused on your goal. And so those are those are, some, again, some key things. Um, our, we think about distractions as like kind of like major catastrophes, and those things happen. They do, but they could be as simple as what am I spending my time doing? You know, mm-hmm. what, are, what what am I focused on? Am I focused on things that you know, in terms of you know, educating me, or am I focused on things that are enticing me to to go out and overspend and be fiscally irresponsible with my money? You know, what what am I uh, my entertainment options, you know, what am I doing to, to enjoy life? And I, and I'm a big advocate for looking for budget friendly ways to still enjoy life, still find the joy while you're getting out of debt, because that helps this become more of a, um, a, a lifestyle for you versus yeah. just a chore that I'm trying to, you know, tough it up before I, you know, go on my next shopping spree you know and no this is a lifestyle change that we're hoping to to develop and that's why i think within these within these first seven weeks of meeting with somebody regularly meeting with a group regularly reporting on the the progress that you've made Mm -hmm. or or even just sharing some of the things that you learned because one of the the other things of things that i'm encouraging you is to continue to increase your your financial literacy continue to grow in your understanding about topics related to personal finance i'm late to the game even though I've had a podcast myself for the last five years, I don't, I really this year just started listening to podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like really slow on trend, okay? (laughs) Something has to be around for a while for me to catch on. So I've really started to listening to podcasts this year, but and then I'm finding that there are so many wonderful podcasts out. For instance, Couple Money has a a, a great um, podcast on marriage and, and, and wealth building. So are you listening to those types of things that are going to build your your knowledge base Mm -hmm. and help you make better decisions about managing money and then if you are doing those things can you bring that back to the group and say you know what this i listened to this great podcast on this topic and this is what i got out of it and kind of bring that up and, and balance that off or bounce that off of your other group mates to 
continue to make those things that you're learning stick. Because sometimes we hear things and then it's a good idea and it goes out. But if you can discuss that, it's, it, that you can discuss it and kind of continually have these conversations with people, that's a way of reinforcing the things that you've learned yeah. as well as, again, allowing this group to hold you accountable. So all that to say, those are some of the things that <laughs> I'm, I'm really encouraged that will make a difference, I think, with um, people who have possibly either tried this before or maybe feel a little bit overwhelmed at um, looking at their debt. This is something I did while I was working through our debt is I, I clued in and listened to stories of other people who did what I was trying to do. Mm -hmm. So that was super encouraging. And and it was kind of almost a little bit healthy competition. Like, oh, if they could do it, why can't I? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. (laughs) So that might be something too, where you learn, oh, you know, this single mom who I'm using one of the examples, a single mom, um, she was a U.S. Marine and she ended up uh, retiring just recently $180,000 worth of debt. Um, super cool. You know what? And if she, she's no, she wasn't, um, she's no super woman, super human person. She's a regular person who just made up her mind that she's going to do this. And those are some, I think when you, when you see that this is possible, mm-hmm. those are some of the things that you can bring to the group and you guys can encourage one another. And maybe you can even set up like, again, a little healthy competition, um, who who was able to stick with their budget this week, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, you know, that person gets bragging rights or something like that or a home cooked meal or whatever, <laughs> you know, those are some of the things that you can, you guys can do to encourage one another to stick with this now. So once you've gone through this, this first seven weeks and, and this first seven weeks, again, I don't want people to think, oh, I should be debt free in seven weeks. I'm not saying that at all. But once you've gone through this first seven weeks, you should have a foundation set for which to take the rest of your debt dumping journey. So you should have had a number of of weeks practicing sticking with your budget. You've done some tracking. You hopefully looked at your budget very critically and figured out what could be um, either reduced or simply eliminated temporarily. You've, You've looked at seriously some additional sources of making money if that if you need to supplement your income you've really analyzed the distractions that have stopped you in the past or that potentially might uh, stop you in the future one of those might be loans you know what do you do if somebody comes and asks you for a loan um and they really are serious about it and they really need it so you know maybe it's you know it's a good time to discuss that develop a strategy for that ahead of time so that you're not kind of caught off guard or dealing with emotion in the moment and those are some very real things that happen so once you've gone through all of this in that first seven weeks and then i definitely suggest you commit with your group to staying with one another for the next year now that year can look uh, a couple of different ways you can go you can kind of i would definitely suggest easing up on the meetings because um you know I think we can kind of commit to something short term, but if you drag it out, it could lose its luster. So you can definitely ease back maybe to either twice a month or once a month where Mm -hmm. you're, you're meeting and kind of checking in on one another, keeping each other focused because getting out of debt is going, can be for some a long term um, endeavor. And so for this first year, this is where you're actually going to be putting into practice some of those things that you developed in the first seven weeks. And that's where you're building your habits. You're building, you're replacing bad habits, hopefully with, with better, new, more productive money management habits. And you're using your group or you're allowing your group to help keep you accountable and help you stay focused while you're doing the same thing for them. And um, over the next year, if you can get through this first year, you can do you can stick with it until completion. I, I really believe that. So you you if you're kind of adjusting your your lifestyle to to such that you again, you've developed your starter emergency fund, you are um, living on a budget, you are making good decisions about what to do with your cash, you, you know, you're holding your what, what we call our your regular finance committee meetings, even if your finance committee is a meeting is a committee of one, i.e. single people. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, these are some of the things that again, you're developing those habits. And that's gonna, that's what's gonna stick with you and propel you on to success in actually getting out of debt because you didn't get into debt overnight we shouldn't expect that we're going to get out overnight you know although it can happen but (laughs) just in case it doesn't plan b is building um better financial habits that are going to take you through not only dumping your debt but once you're finished with your debt you want to make sure that you're not you 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 put in place a, a 
financial mindset that's going to prevent you from going back into that place again. So that that's the idea of, of using community, using friends with benefits for something beneficial. <laughs> Well, I, I really like it, and I, I love how enthusiastic you are about this. Thanks again to Tony for sharing her advice and information. Please check her out at DebtFreeDivas.com to get the latest articles from her and find out when her book Dumping Debt Through the Power of Community is released. Don't forget to hear the latest episodes of the Couple Money Podcast when they're released. Go ahead and subscribe. It's free. We're available on iTunes, Stitcher, and some episodes are on SoundCloud. You can also leave a review of the show on any of those sites. I'd love to hear what you think. The feed is also available on couplemoneypodcast.com so you can grab it on whatever service you prefer. Take care and have a wonderful week. Mm -hmm.